which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I call and made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, wherein do I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me, my Holy Father, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Blessed I pray, God help us, Lord, to say only those things this morning that will be well pleased in thy sight. Lord, help us to say nothing. Lord, that's not according to thy will. And I thank you for what you do. We need your help. And through thee only can we preach the Word. And I pray, God, for your help. In Jesus' name, amen. This word gospel in today's world of religion and uh, quote-unquote spiritual speakers much of the truth of the Word of God has been uh, has been neglected. Uh, we hear I hear a lot of preaching today of, of, people, of preachers preaching on worldly affairs. Now, on occasion, I may bring something of uh, the world that is, I think, of importance to the to the Word of God, and that may be a significant thing uh, to help us understand where we're at. But I don't get up here and preach to you every Sunday on worldly affairs. Uh, Y'all be depressed all the time if I did so. Uh, one thing I didn't do last week was watch the news. I, I don't know a, a thing that's going on in the world today because, hey, you know, that did me good. That did me good. That helped me out not knowing and seeing all the troubles that's in the world. And, uh, of course, I'll get back on that, I'm afraid. But anyway, uh, you can spend all the time in the world preaching on worldly affairs and yet neglect the truth of the gospel, what the Bible is all about to you and I. Many preachers preach today on a, a lifestyle of living, uh, you know, living uh, in wealth and living in health and not having any problems and thinking yourself, you know, into the positive uh, uh, way of life all the time. But life's just not that way. There's 
because I heard there was a meteor shower. And I wanted to see those shooting stars. And I got out and I watched for a long time as those stars streaked across the sky. And you can't right, listen. Anybody with one, you know, uh, one eye and half sense has got to understand that it took God to do all that. It took God to put all those stars up there and form them in the shape that they are in. And I looked at the Big Dipper and I looked at the Little Dipper and, and all those other things that I always love doing if I can ever drag myself out of bed when it's clear enough to see. And I looked at all that and I'm thinking, God the Creator loved me. God the one that put the stars up there. He loves me. God the one that, that hung all the, the planets where they're at. He loves me. God loves me, friend. And God loves you. We can never, I don't believe ever, in our lifetime express to you and us to understand in our in our finite minds how that God of all glory, the Creator, how that He can love the creature so much as you and I believe he does. God loves the sinner. I've told you this story before. And there was a, a, an elderly Greek man that I knew that lived to be a hundred years, a hundred and three when he passed away. And I, I went to him in the hospital. He was, you know, he was, he was a, 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 he believed he could speak Greek. He knew all the Bible. He could tell you lots of things about it. And I asked him one time, I said, I said, what does agape love? What is agape love? And that's a Greek word. And I wanted to hear it from somebody that, that really knew. I read about it. I knew what, you know what he said? He looked at me and said, God loves a sinner. I said, hallelujah, I'll never forget that. That's the kind of love that God had for you and I. He has that agape love that only He can have for us. Amen. God loves a sinner. And on his, you know, on his dying day, He accepted Jesus and got saved. He knew all about it, but He never accepted the Lord. But He cried, heard myself cry out to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, save me. Amen. All those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. But God loves you and God loves me. The gospel tells the love story of the Creator for the creature who is mankind. And then also the gospel means this. It means that the only way to God is through the gospel. The only way to God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now the God the Creator, who loved me, sent God the Son into this world to die on the cross of Calvary because He loved me. And to pay my sin. The only way I can get to God is through Jesus Christ. There's no one. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Isn't this simple this morning? Isn't this a simple story, a simple message? But it is the truth. I'll tell you, friend, that God loves a sinner. And the only way that you'll ever get to God, the only way that you'll ever get to heaven, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. See, there's so much teaching today and so much false preaching today. <coughs> oh, I'll be, if I'm good enough, I'll get to God. If I live right, I'll get to God. If, I'm, if I keep the commandments, I'll get to God. But no man, no man but the Lord Jesus Christ was ever, ever able to fulfill the law that Christ did. The only way to God is through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. No way of salvation. The only way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then number three, the sinner's hope is in the gospel. You're a sinner today. You lost without God. Now we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no one sets before me today that's not a sinner now. I don't like that preacher. Well, you don't like the Bible then because it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible teaches us that daily we must confess our sin and that we can, after we're saved, we have to confess sin. Why? Because we're still sinners by this old nature. But on the inside, hallelujah, I've been changed by the power of the gospel. By the power of the word of God on the inside, I've been changed. And the only hope for the sinner is the reception of the gospel message. And if you're here today a sinner that is lost without God, you've never asked Jesus in your heart, I'll tell you, the simplicity of it is this, if you don't, don't get saved, you'll die and go to hell without God. I don't know how else to say it, but to tell you the truth. If I'm sick, I want the doctor to tell me the truth. And friend, the truth of the matter is that if you're lost without God, you're sick in sin, and you need Jesus in your heart. And your only hope is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The only hope of your salvation is through Him. It's, he is the gospel, is the sinner's only hope. Not of works, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if I could work my way, if there was another way I could get to God, if it was by my good works, hey, friend, it could be on the same level with God. It would make me perfect in Him. But if not, friend, and 
change the fact that I'm saved. But it's possible that I can backslide on God. If I don't keep Jesus close, I'll fall away and I'll backslide on Him. But the sinner's only hope is through the gospel. Number four, the perfection of mankind is through the gospel. You know I'm perfect? I said, wait a minute, if you're on the way, if you're ugly, wearing glasses, you got a false team? I don't know, but probably will one day. How can that be perfect? Now you're looking at perfect man. Boy, this is going to catch some attention. Watch everybody look. <laughs> no, I will tell you, this old man, this old flesh is not perfect. But inside of me, there's a new nature, hallelujah, that's perfect. Because Christ lives in me. When I got saved, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And guess what? He moved on the inside. And that part of me, my friend, is perfect. You're not looking at a perfect man on the outside. But on the inside, my soul is eternally saved. And, I, and that new man in me is perfect because I'm in Christ Jesus. Christ in me. And hallelujah, it's the hope of glory. I'm in Christ. He's in me. So that the, the only way of perfection for mankind here on this earth is inwardly through the Spirit of God. And outwardly, I look at every one of you and tell you, you ain't perfect. And there's some people now, I've told that they thought they were, and it hurt their feelings bad. But I don't believe I've hurt anybody's feelings here this morning, but have you ever seen people that thought they were perfect? I mean, they, they dress perfect. They walk perfect. They held their hair just the same, you know, all the time. Everything was perfect about them. But just one thing goes wrong in their life and they realize they're not perfect. And all of a sudden, shh, it all goes out of them. Because they understand they're not perfect. No man's perfect. But that that lives within me, friend, is perfect. That holy, y'all be proud of that. Amen. The Holy Spirit, you may make things, you may have faith, you're after faith. But the Spirit of God lives in you is, is perfect. And no matter what, but every time you mess up, the devil said, yeah, look at you. If you saved, you wouldn't have done that. If you saved, you wouldn't have thought that. But remember, one day you believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, so you are saved. Remember that. And when the devil comes along and says you're not, you say, I know I'm not perfect, but that which lives in me is perfect. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And guess what? The devil can't do a thing about it. Amen. All he can do is point out your flaws. See, he went to Job and he, he told God, he said, look what he's done. Look, look at all, look at all. You let me touch him and even though he's what he is, you let me touch him and I'll show you what kind of man Job is. Yet he touched Job and, and Job lost everything he had and then uh, he's, you know, he's He's sitting there on the on the, the potter's heap, scraping his sores with a piece of pottery. And he said, The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He knew that he wasn't perfect, but he knew that which we lived in him was perfect. So the sinner's only hope. The perfection of mankind is through the gospel. Then number five, got two more. Our eternal destiny is determined. Uh, whether or not we accept the gospel. A friend, one of these days, if you've not already come and made your, your choice, one of these days you're going to come to the crossroads in your life. And the Holy Spirit of God is going to deal with you and He's going to say, if you go this way, it's death and hell for it. But if you'll come to me, if you'll come to me, if you'll trust me, I'll change your eternal destiny and you'll live with me forever and you go to heaven. How do I do that, preacher? Believe the gospel. What is the gospel? I'm going to tell you in just a minute. But I'll tell you something, friend. I'm glad one day that the choice was mine. I didn't have, God didn't have to give me but one chance. And God gave me that one chance. And I'm glad when God gave me that one chance that I accepted Him as my Savior. God didn't have to do that. He could, have, he could have said, all right, you rejected me, and I'll never deal with you again. But God's a merciful, kind God. God's a gracious God. He's, he's a kind God. And through His mercy, God would deal with me again. But He didn't have to. Friend, today, God may have dealt with you already. He may have given you the opportunity to come to know Him. And you said, no, I'm not going to come to know Jesus. I'm not going to ask Him today. I've got too much to give up. No, you, I will tell you what, you've got very little to give up, but you've got a whole lot to gain. Amen? And I'll tell you today, my friend, your eternal destiny is determined by whether or not you believe the gospel. 
If you believe in Jesus and trust Him as your Savior, your destiny is in heaven with Him for all eternity. But if you don't, your destiny is already determined. You go to heaven without God. And I'll say to you today, there is nothing under the sun worth going to hell over. There's no body. There's no things. There's no wealth, no amount of money, nothing worth going to hell over. Well, this life is short. It's only, it's very brief. It is His the Bible said it is as a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanishes away. It's gone in no time. I'm 56, soon be 57. It just seems like a few a few years ago I was running them down the roads as a teenager. But now, look at me. I'm getting older. Look at yourself. You're getting older. And life is brief, friend. It's very short. If you've not accepted Jesus, behold, today is the day of salvation. Then last of all, <coughs> I say to you that life is better when you understand and believe the gospel. Now, I've said this many times, and, and I really believe it. I really feel this way. I know that since I've been saved, I've been my destiny is heaven. And I've had some troubles and trials and heartaches in my life, but I've faced some struggles and heartaches and trials. And I've got to think back, it's been pretty rough.